Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Parish in Framingham. I am Lauren Strauss, Director of Religious Exploration. I use she, her pronouns, and I will be your worship associate this morning. First Parish in Framingham is a welcoming congregation. We celebrate and welcome people of all sexual orientations, races, ages, gender, identities, abilities, or beliefs. We welcome you if you are joining us in the meeting house, on Zoom, or if you are watching this service after the fact. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on life's journey, you belong here. Unitarian Universalism is a progressive, inclusive faith guided by moral principles such as the worth and dignity of every person, we draw inspiration from world religions and philosophies, science, history, and the arts. I draw your attention to the announcements in the order of service. Immediately after our service, you are invited to join us for our coffee hour in Scott Hall across the courtyard. That will be followed by a um, cottage meeting at 1130 also in Scott Hall. There will be one tomorrow evening on Zoom at 7. Um, and please just look at those other announcements because they're super important too. This morning will be more experimental, nope, experiential, but both <laughs> than normal. After a brief reflection from our minister, we will break off into different groups to learn a specific spiritual practice. If nothing is especially speaking to you this morning, I invite you to join one that you will feel will stretch you the most. For the safety and comfort of all, please remember to keep your mask on at all times when you're inside a first parish building, unless you are actively eating, drinking, or speaking at a microphone. Please also turn your phones and other devices that may, might make noise to their quietest worship setting. 
Finally, we recognize that we come here to rest, to be recharged or challenged or affirmed. Whatever your reason this morning, you belong here. Maybe only for the next hour, but we hope for longer. You belong here and we are happy to have you with us. I now invite you to take a deep breath in and out. Continue to take a few more deep breaths over the next few moments. Begin to let go of what you need to let go of, to be more fully present to yourself, one another, and the sacred in this time and place. A flame within a chalice is the primary symbol of the Unitarian Universalist faith tradition. To symbolize the light of reason, the warmth of community, and the flame of hope, it is our tradition to begin our worship by kindling the flame of our chalice. I light our chalice with these words from our hymnal attributed to Kalidasa. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life in its brief course lie all the ver verities and realities of your existence, the bliss, ooh, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Please rise in body or in spirit, whichever one is best for you, to join in singing hymn number 1008 and remain standing for our sung affirmation and spoken affirmation. Please remain standing 
and join in our sung and spoken affirmations. The words are printed in your order of service. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Cavanaugh Murphy, and I serve as ministerial intern here at First Parish. I use she, her pronouns. In our community, there is great joy, and there is also great sorrow. We set aside this time each week because we know that joy shared is joy expanded and sorrow shared can feel as though someone is lifting a burden please know that you can write down your own joys or sorrows in our book at the back of the sanctuary or you can submit them online each week i will begin by sharing our sorrows and then we will sing the first verse of Comfort Me. We have one this morning. Dean shares, a good friend lost both parents over the past month and a half, and then he died early Saturday morning, leaving his wife and two daughters. Thinking of Dr. David Emmanuel. Please join in singing the first verse. I now share our joys. Marianne writes, I am celebrating the launch of my sister, Dr. Emily Orlando's third book. She's an Edith Wharton scholar and women's literature professor. We'll now sing verse two. The lyric is sing with me. We light one final candle this morning for all the joys and the sorrows, which may remain unspoken, but yelled, held deeply in our hearts. And now we will join together in singing the third verse of Comfort Me, the lyric, Speak For Me.
This is the part of our service that we set aside for going a little bit deeper, for finding that stillness that we so often miss in our day-to-day -day lives. I invite you to notice your breath in and your breath out. I invite you too to notice whatever is supporting you, whether it is literal, a chair, or a bed, or your feet, or more metaphorical, the love of this community, or family, or friends. O spirit of life and love, named and unnamed, but who calls us each by the name we had before all other names, which is beloved. I give thanks for this gathering, for this constellation of people that will shift and change over the days and years to come. I give thanks for the joys of our community, for people putting their passion out into the world. For all those singing, all those bringing a little bit more good to our world, we give thanks. And we know too that in our midst there are people who are ill, people who are mourning, people who are lonely, people who struggle to make sense of the world and to find their place in it. If we are the people who are struggling, let us be comforted by the fact that we are not alone. And if we are lucky enough not to be struggling, May we have the courage to reach out and listen, to ease somebody else's burden. We know too that in our world there is turmoil, there is strife, there are war-torn parts of our world, whether it is homes, destroyed by intimate partner violence, or homes destroyed by missiles and guns, terror and natural disasters. Let us remember that we can be peacemakers. We can steady the waters. We just need the strength and the resilience to do so. May we have that resilience and that fortitude to bend the arc of the universe towards justice. And I know looking out on this gathered community that we are all human. That is something that unites us and humans are beautiful creatures and they sometimes make mistakes. When we come up short, may we find ways to rebuild relationship with others, with our authentic selves and whatever is beyond us, divinity, the universe, or the atmosphere that we breathe. We have time because we are breathing to rebuild, to say I'm sorry, and to go forth. I say these words and do all things for love's sake. Let us now sit in the quiet of this community. I'll keep track of the time.
May it be so, and amen. First parish leaders, both volunteers and members of the staff, work diligently throughout the year to be careful and attentive stewards of the congregation and its funds. Countless meetings, reports, documents, and budgets are necessary to maintain the health of an organization, especially one that has endured over so many generations. We depend on our tools and on our teams to track where every dollar goes, and they do just that. But the gifts you make to our weekly offering or through your annual pledge represent far more than lines on a spreadsheet. Your contributions are a tangible commitment to the mission and vision of this congregation. Each time you give, you renew this commitment. And as a result, your support is entwined with all that we believe and all that we do here together. This is its own special gift. In this spirit of trust and generosity, we gratefully accept the offering. It is very early on in seminary, like day one of orientation. And honestly, I have no idea what I am doing there. <laughs> While every other part of my life has involved thoughtful planning and going slow, this entry into seminary was fast. Now I had been interested in the ministry for a while, uh, but I wanted to try and do something else other than school. So I tried living the trail build, building lifestyle out in New Mexico. I was there for the summer and applied for a job to stay in New Mexico past the mid-August end date of my contract, and I didn't get the job. So I reached out to folks at the seminary I was interested in to see if I could take just one class just to dip my feet into the water. And 10 days later, I was admitted as a full-time student. 
And I remember that first day, uh, my parents were dropping my sister off at her college, and I ended up getting on the commuter rail in on the frame on the Fitchburg line and riding all the way into North Station and then riding all the way out on the Green Line to Newton Center. And all I had for that first week was in my hiking backpack that I had lived out of that summer. And I'm in a small meditation room in the basement of the chapel. And there are four or five of us new students there and a second or third year seminarian who is leading us. And I'm just out of college and I am the youngest person in that room. Andover Newton prided itself on helping people of all ages enter into seminary. So the average age of seminarians was about 55. And this is the first time, the first time I had had an opportunity to rest after my head spinning all of those weeks before. This group of us was called the Spiritual Formation Group. It was designed to teach ministers very early on in their ministry how to rely on other religious professionals for collegial support, and also to teach spiritual practices. The experiences in that, in that group both stretched me and centered me, because when I entered seminary, I had no idea what a spiritual practice was. I had preached one or two sermons, and they were mediocre at best, and I had barely cracked open the Bible. The next year, I had the honor of leading one of those groups. And then after that time, I sort of dropped away from spiritual practices. The day-to-day -day rhythm was enough to support me. Early on in minister school, the stress feels made up, a fiction that's driven only by this class syllabus. Yes, there are real spiritual and life crises that happen while in seminary, but it's nothing like the stresses of the regular day-to-day -day job in ministry. We know that often in times of stress, we forget to take care of ourselves. We stay up late or wake up early to get the work done. We eat food that fills our stomach but might not nourish us. We neglect our relationships. We turn inward. To be honest, I was not doing much spiritual practice until we entered into that time of forced isolation nearly three years ago. And I was a ball of nerves and anxieties during those first early days, unsure of how to lead the congregation I was serving and unsure of just how safe it was to go down to the grocery store. And I dutifully went on a walk or run around my neighborhood. And that was enough until one day a younger congregant of mine in Lawrence, Kansas said, hey, there's this community of younger-ish folks gathering on Zoom for Lexio Divina and sitting in silence. Let me know if you'll be interested and I'll send the link along. So I joined and continued to show up to this group for more than a year until the program ended in 2021. And I started offering Lexio Divina a spiritual practice uh, that's sacred reading a process of reading a text slowly and deeply, both in my last congregation, I've offered it here, and I've also offered it for colleagues on a weekly basis. Because as numerous people have said over the years, when things are good, pray for one hour a day. And when things are busy, pray for two hours a day. When things are bad or busy or just meh, we need anchors or we need the push to go along. Spiritual or contemplative practices, if spiritual doesn't work for you, are any practice that you can engage with, with intention, attention, and repetition, as Elizabeth reminded me uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday. Casper Turkheil explains it this way. We just need to be clear about our intention what are we inviting into this moment? Bring it to our attention, coming back to being present in this moment and make space for repetition, coming back to this practice time and again. In this way, rituals make the invisible connections that make life meaningful visible. And these practices don't have to be something complex, though they could be, 
Simple is usually best because the simple things I find I have the time and space for repetition. From seminary orientation to retirement, everyone in ministry hears about the importance of spiritual practices. It's usually the first question that gets asked when another colleague hears that another one is having a tough time. How are your spiritual practices? However, few ministers actually take the time to teach those practices to the congregations they serve. And truth be told, after leading worship and rites of passage, teaching spiritual practices is one of the parts of ministry that gives me the most joy. Maybe it's that unused high school teaching license that I have. I'm not sure. So this morning, we are offering you an opportunity to practice likely just one spiritual practice, but maybe if you're leading a spiritual practice, maybe we could do it for 15 minutes and then we, we switch. That's to Lauren, Dean, Elizabeth, and Sarah online. Um, so we're going to be offering you an opportunity to experience some spiritual practices this morning. Each of these will be led by a staff member, or if uh, you're joining us on Zoom, not sure which camera is currently on me, but if you're joining us on Zoom, Sarah will have an online experience for you uh, to take part in. I could preach more about spiritual practices, but it's kind of like that quote about dancing about architecture. It doesn't really do the job. You have to experience it. This service is a way to remind ourselves that faith formation or religious exploration is everything that we do with the congregation being the curriculum. I want to say this before we sing a song and I uh, say a benediction, you go on your way. The session you pick, you might not like, and that is okay. There are spiritual practices from A to Z. I didn't like Lexio Divina the first time and now I don't know what my life would be without it. I was constantly worried, am I getting this right. My professor for spiritual practices, Brita Gil Austern, said to me when I expressed this worry about getting it right, she said, Aaron, they're called spiritual practices, not spiritual perfections. You have to keep on doing them. So let us sing a song, and then I'll let you go on your way. All of the choices are listed in your order of service, as well as the locations. That is last week's order of service, uh, but you each have a copy of it, so you can take a look there. So let us uh, join in singing our final hymn, number 352, Find a Stillness. Please rise in body or spirit. So I send you forth to experience a spiritual practice. I invite you to enter into those spaces with an open mind and an open heart. May you find some sense 
of connection to yourself and others, and may you have fun as well. So again, the locations are in the order of service. Uh, go forth, enjoy, and we'll wrap up around 11, and feel free to get coffee after that.